What has driven China's transformation? Hard work and genius unleashed under effective leadership and policies. Charity bestowed by developed countries. Plunder and exploitation of other territories in the manner of former Western colonizers. I was born shortly before China started reform and opening up 40 years ago, and I have lived the changes that followed. My father was a railway engineer and my mother a worker in a papermaking mill. The overriding memory I have of them is that they left home early and came home late. My two elder sisters did the same, leaving home at dawn to make it to school in time and coming home when it was dark. This lasted for years before we went to university, one after another. We've had separate lives ever since, pursuing our individual dreams. Basically, we were expanding our own worlds. And when hundreds of millions of Chinese people do the same at the same time, just like the expansion of the universe, you get to where we are pretty fast in today's China. The labor participation rate compiled by the World Bank shows that in 1990, 79% of Chinese people of active labor age were working, compared to 65%, for instance, in America. In 2017, that gap was smaller, but still 69% versus 62%. For decades, we didn't have the luxury to enjoy life. We wanted to change ourselves desperately. As we are taking stock of 40 years of trial and tribulation, the U.S. administration claimed it was, first and foremost, the U.S. that rebuilt China over the past 25 years. Sure, by supporting China's entry to the World Trade Organization in 2001, the U.S. opened its economy to China, to borrow the words of many Americans. But without the reform and opening up which started in 1978, under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, we would never have enjoyed such progress. Brazil and India both have access to U.S. market, but the U.S. hasn't managed to rebuild them. Why? China's inclusion into the world economy has not been a one-way road. Again, borrowing a word from a uh, U.S. administration official. Foreign companies, especially U.S. companies, capitalized tremendously on China's opening up. In 2017, Ford sold 4 million cars in China, 45% of its total sales. If anybody rebuilt anybody else, China probably rebuilt many foreign companies. Meanwhile, had China not produced affordable and quality goods for people around the world, for instance in America, Americans would not have enjoyed the same good life they have taken for granted for so long. It is worth noting that in the wake of China's WTO accession, U.S. per capita GDP was about 44,000 U.S. dollars. By the end of 2017, it rose to almost 53,000, an increase of roughly 20%. Over the same period, inflation-adjusted manufacturing sector output in the U.S. rose by more than 15%. In this sense, should we say China helped rebuild America? The correct way to put things really is U.S. investment and engagement or foreign investment and engagement helped China's modernization at a time when China was already taking off after a century of humiliation, after the country had already adopted the right attitude towards growth and already prepared itself with a large and well-educated labor force. My family is just a small example of how that transformation took place. For the U.S. to claim all the credit for it would be disrespectful, to say the least. Forty years of reform and opening up did not just transform our lives, but the lives of people around the world. As that process is ongoing, it can be expected that the dividend of China's growth will continue to be felt far and wide. This will not be changed by the will of one person or one country unless they keep dreaming of a return to their own good old days.